Hey guys, in today's video we'll be talking about warfarin-induced necrosis. So let's get started. What does warfarin first do? Let's talk about that. So it's an anticoagulant, it inhibits vitamin K epoxide reductase, and as a result, it inhibits carboxylation of vitamin K dependent factors. And there's a few of those in the coagulation cascade. So essentially, it's going to also inhibit coagulation cascade like heparin does, but in a different mechanism. And these vitamin K dependent factors are factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Um, there are also anticoagulants, protein C and S affected by this, and that's a key point to keep in the back of your mind for now. The way I think of warfarin is that it's a vitamin K antagonist, to simplify it. So now let's talk about this complication, necrosis. So like I mentioned, warfarin affects factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, but also anticoagulants, protein C and S. Well, there's subcutaneous necrosis that happens because of the more rapid inhibition of anticoagulants, protein C and S, compared to the inhibition of procoagulants, which are factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. So it's a timeline thing. So this is what happens in the cascade. There's rapid, rapid inhibition of vitamin K-dependent anticoagulants, protein C and S, before there is any effect on factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Now, because of this, for a period of time, you're going to have a hypercoagulable state, which is exactly what you're not trying to do. And because of this hypercoagulable state that you are currently in, you're going to have local thrombotic occlusions of small vessels in your body. Now, these tiny thromboses in your small vessels are going to cause pain, they're going to cause purpura, they're going to build up. And in some individuals, this builds up and this eventually will cause skin necrosis. So this, this doesn't happen to all people, but this is a cascade that has the potential of happening. Now, in terms of the timeline of this complication, it usually happens two to five days after warfarin therapy is initiated. And I've added a picture right over here of how this necrosis can look like. One last thing I want to point out. This complication is more likely in people who already have other conditions that make their blood more hypercoagulable, such as protein C, S deficiency, or antiphospholipid antibodies. But anything that makes your blood more coagulable already, this is more likely.